want to share with you for a few moments this morning from the subject, Going After the Glory. Going After the Glory. I want you to just look at somebody and tell them, neighbor. neighbor. Come on, say it stronger. Neighbor. neighbor. No matter what it takes, go after, go after the glory of God. Glory. Be seated in his presence. Now, last week we dealt with something very specifically. Go far. Did you hear this? Uh, we heard something very significant on last Sunday, and I want to reiterate that as it pertains to grace, as it pertains to growth. Uh, but I want to look at something else here because these are what I'm calling uh, prophetic uh, passages or prophetic promising prophetic passages. And as a result, they deal with significant things uh, that I believe speak very poignantly uh, to the season that God has us in. And I want us to understand, I know we're in summer season and all that, and like I said on the prayer call that we had this past Wednesday, uh, we're declaring that this is not going to be a summer uh, of us floundering or faltering, no matter the transitions and no matter the things that are happening, but we're going to flourish in the promises of God. Do you receive that word? Amen. Do you say amen? amen? We're going to come into the promises of God. I know uh, many times we're adjusted to and used to what appears or what is normally called a summer slump. Uh, in which you kind of just hang on for dear life and just hold on until September comes right around Labor Day for us in New York when things kind of brighten up and then everybody kind of gets their ducks in order as the kids go back to school. But I want to declare to you right now that by the Spirit of the living God that this is a season for us corporately to flourish in the promises of God. All week long, I've been ministering to different pastors and others who have been feeling extremely discouraged uh, because around July and August is when you begin to see pictures online of those who are going on vacations or sometimes they're placations and all of those kind of things. But yet, despite all the things you see in front of you, I want you to settle it in your spirit. Settle it when you go to work tomorrow. Settle it every day for the rest of this month and this summer season. This is a season to flourish. This is a time to move in the promises of God to possess that which God has ordained for your life. And notice now what happens. Last week we saw very specifically, it said that the Lord took note of Hannah. She conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. And we understood the foundation of being graced to grow. But today I want to look at it from an entirely different dynamic. First of all, notice what happens in verse number 30. Therefore the Lord God of Israel declares. Therefore the Lord God declares. Whenever God declares something, it is established. It is established. In Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, we find uh, the words that really settle our hearts for where we are. And I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, uh, around the beginning of the passages, you'll find that the author of Hebrews says something very specific, uh, and that is this, and I want you to ponder this and think on this, especially because he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Why is this significant? It is significant because if God is our author and our finisher, that means that he already has the end in mind. Are you hearing me? Are you talk back to me now? Yes. That means he already has the end in mind. We don't know how it will end. But we do know that in him, he's ended from our beginning. Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Another translation says, the pioneer and the perfecter. Why is this significant? This is significant for two reasons. If he's the author and the finisher, God is not trying to figure out what's about to happen next for you. You are. He already has in mind exactly where you're going to be because when he created you, he also created your ending. And what happens is, in our lives and in our circumstances, the enemy and, and things around us and poor decisions and all kinds of stuff that happen that begin to plague us to cause us to not be able to understand or believe that that which God has promised is even possible. But notice, he's the author and the finisher. So if he's the author and the finisher, he is not only the author and the finisher, but he's the author and the architect. Why is this important? 
Because no architect establishes a building without a blueprint. I have several friends of mine that are in construction. Maybe watch. No architect establishes a building without a blueprint. Every single thing that has been built in the earth was built in the earth because a blueprint was behind it. In fact, if a blueprint had not been behind it, it would not have been built. The blueprint and the drawing is established years before the building is even built. Normally, uh, especially depending on the type of project, it takes a number of years for them to do the permits and all kinds of stuff. But they have to hire the architect to establish the frame and the borders and the dimensions of the building so that it can be built properly. Why is this important? Because... When we understand how God works, as I said last week, God is not result-oriented as we are. He's process-oriented, which means he's processing us, but while he's processing us, he's building us into the blueprint he's designed for us. So some things don't always feel comfortable. Some things don't always feel lovely. Some things don't always feel good. But I am being molded and shaped into the design that God desires for my life. If he's the author and the finisher, the author and the architect, it also means not only has he established the blueprint in the heavens, but he also has a design in mind for where exactly I'm going. And so here we find ourselves situated again in the book of 1 Samuel. A book of transition. A book of transition. Uh, in his book, Jim Collins, Jim Collins, a, a dynamic uh, author that's been respected, especially as it pertains to entrepreneurship and business. One of the notable books uh, that he has read, written is called Good to Great. Read it significantly many years ago. Uh, but not only that, he wrote another book, uh, Trevor, that's called, uh, a book called How the Mighty Have Fallen. How the Mighty Have Fallen. And in this book, he details specifically why major corporations have fallen apart and no longer exist today. So you could think of Circuit City and other things that we grew up, uh, some of you seeing around uh, in New York City alone and other places around the country that are no longer in existence. One of the first principles he outlines in that book is the undisciplined, hear me carefully, pursuit of more. The un discipline, pursuit of more. And so what he says is, you know that the ship is getting ready to sink when you become undisciplined and want to pursue the wrong things. And here we find this in our passage of scripture. The children of Israel have been used to having God as their source, God as their voice, and they're in transition from a nomadic company of tribes now to a political structure that is on the verge of coming. And yet in the midst of this, while the priesthood is faltering, God begins to raise up a faithful prophethood. While everybody else's attention is on the wrong things, God is working behind the scenes, doing something that does not always make sense in the immediate moment. All right, let me make this plain for you. Have you ever been in a season in your life in which you were trying to figure out how this thing was going to work out, how this thing was going to connect, how this thing was going to come together, and it seemed as if the more you prayed, the more it got worse? Am I talking to anybody here this morning? The more you prayed, the more it seemed to get worse. And you thought that the prayer would make it get better. And it seems as if you're spiraling downward in quicksand. And notice what happens. The Lord becomes displeased because the ones he's trusted have turned against him. And what I've discovered is that it's very difficult when God begins to really bless you. If you're not careful to believe your own height. <laughs> you ever met somebody or know somebody? You got to know somebody uh, that you know you knew them when they didn't have much of anything. 
and they hit you up when they didn't have a job for, for a little bit of help and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And as soon as they got on their feet, they forgot, come on, talk to me. They forgot what was helping them before. And when you need a little help, uh, they don't respond to your cash app request. Hello, somebody. It's very easy to get confused when you get somewhere. The old folk call it, they said you're getting higher than your, your britches. Families from the south. And what I've discovered is that's where the nation is in this passage of scripture. Things are going well, and while things are going well on the front, it's deteriorating on the inside. And I've come to the place in realization where I'm tired of looking at filtered pictures online if there's something deteriorating on the inside. I don't want to just see all the kind of stuff that we promote and produce and put forward for the world if it's not really happening on the inside. The light of the temple had gone dim because they did not know who God was and what he was doing in their life. And notice what happens. The Lord declares. Hallelujah. Somebody shout the Lord declares. The Lord declares. That's one thing I love about it. God is that even when people speak things over me, I don't have to attest or take it as God's word because their word is always subject to the word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can I, can I share something with you? I want you to know something. I've opted out of certain things in my life. There's some drama. I've opted out of it. I love the unsubscribe button on email. Hello, somebody. You all know what I'm talking about. Yes, if you get an email, you know, you go to Target and go somewhere and you forgot that you said, yeah, you can send me an email. And then, oh my God, you look in a couple of days, you got 30 emails from the place you just bought. All you brought was a piece of bread and they send you emails about stuff you don't even eat. Come on, talk to me. And all of that kind of stuff. But I have opted out of certain things. Certain things in my life, I'm, I'm coming to unsubscribe. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's certain things. I'm, I'm muting out some misery. Come on, talk to me. I'm muting out dysfunction. I'm muting out things that will try to distract or derail me from the promises of God. And notice what the word of God says. He says, I, I want you to know something. I I'm going to shift my hand. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to do something different. The people who are in the front are about to go to the back. And I'm now going to adjust something because I'm getting ready to do something new that has not been done before. Uh, uh, come here, Ben. Uh, notice, I want you to notice something. If we're looking this way, I am in front of him, yes? yes. But if they say about face, if they say about face, he is what? In front of, in front of me. Wow. Now, while, turn back around. Now, while the nation of Israel is continuing to not pay attention to God, they have turned their back to God. And God decides to do an about face. And the very one that was at the front is now the one that they're not looking at. Because the person that he turned to is now the one that they're going to receive from. Very good. So why, 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 why are you saying this? Because Eli was the one that was in position. But he moved out of the purposes of God. Hear me carefully. Don't allow anybody to move you in this season out of the purposes of God by their opinions. If their opinions don't line up with the word of God, you got to put that opinion to the side. I'm tired of listening to people who have so much to say and so much to tell you and they can't live it themselves. That's what he says here. Who honors me? Everybody say, who honors me? Who honors me? Say it again, who honors me? Who honors me? Say it again, who honors me? Who honors me? Honor is the elevator of expansion. Honor is the elevator of expansion. Uh, the Lord spoke to me this week and said, son, everything I've given you is because you've honored me. And he told me, he told me yesterday, he said, son, teach my people tomorrow the reasons why we must honor so I'm going to give you some dimensions of honor. First of all, we have to honor God. Everybody say honor God. honor God. I know people say that today and all kinds of stuff. But if you honor God for real, it will show in your lifestyle. I'm not talking about lip service. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
That's on my lips, sir. Uh -huh. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> I worship and what time we going? I worship and I don't want to go to brunch. What time is it? I'm moving out of lip service to a lifestyle. I'm moving out of just saying that this is what I do into Christ becoming who I am. And understanding that when we honor God, all of our life belongs to Him. I need to say this again. Okay, the Holy Ghost nudging me to turn right now. All of our life, say it, all of my life belongs to God. Say it again, all of my life belongs to God. Here's the problem. We have made salvation just something spiritual. But salvation is not just something spiritual. It is physical and behavioral. Which means if all of your life belongs to God, even the things you slide in DMs and everything else belongs to God too. Are you hearing what I'm saying this morning? If all of your life belongs to God, the secret things belong to God. Notice what happens. Therefore those who honor me, I will what? I will honor those who honor me. I will what? I will honor. So we honor God. Then biblically we honor set leadership. Set man uh, in this case. Uh, not set. Well it's set man in this case of the house leadership. Those that you're placed under in the house of God. And then we honor each other. It goes both ways. It is vertical and it is horizontal. Uh, we honor through giving, our tithe, our seed, sowing into the gift of God. And never allow anyone to appreciate the gifts in your life more than you do. Whatever you don't appreciate dies in your life. Whatever you don't appreciate dies. It depreciates in value. Never allow anyone to sow seeds of dishonor against God. Your man of God. Or the saints of God. That's why our culture is in such a mess. I'm going to say it again. Never allow anyone to sow seeds of dishonor against God. Your man of God or the saints of God. That's why our culture is in such a mess. What should be handled in the house of God is now under the scrutiny online of unredeemed and unsanctified people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, I didn't come to be popular. I came to prophesy. We must restore honor back in its rightful place. Because when we honor God, not just with our lips, but with our lives, it shapes everything that we do. And people will know that there's something different about you. Without even having to put on a suit, a shirt, or a tie, or a blouse, they will know that there's something different about you because of how you carry yourself. Your presence speaks for itself. Therefore, Therefore, those who honor me, I will honor. Those who despise me shall be treated with contempt. Uh, I want us to understand several things, and I'm going to close. It's going to bring this together. We can use, abuse, or lose the following things. Get these down. Life from God, what we have received. Life from God, what we have received. Life from God, what we have received. Time from God. What has been allotted. Time from God. What has been allotted. Uh, one thing I've discovered and was being ministered to this week and a thought emerged from it that you, you can't manage your time really because it's not a thing that belongs to you. But you can manage your focus. can't manage your time but you can manage your focus. What you do with your time. Talents from God. What we have been given to use. Possessions from God, what we have been entrusted to steward. And finances from God, what we have labored for. Why is this significant? Notice the train of the passage of Scripture. Notice what he says. He says something very interesting. Those who honor me, I will honor. Those who honor me, I will honor. Very simple. The Lord's been dealing with me about this very strongly. And I want you to understand this principle. The anointing, you're going to hear this a lot later. In the days to come, the anointing you respect is the anointing you receive. The Lord's been dealing with me about this. The anointing you respect is the anointing you receive. You cannot receive from that which you don't honor. That's why some stuff exit our lives. Because we don't know how to properly receive. Hello, somebody. 
But one thing I love about God, God knows how to redeem the time. <laughs> Somebody came this morning, you, you had some missed opportunities. But I came to let you know, even in the midst of a missed opportunity, God will sit there and turn that thing right around for your good. Notice as I close this message, he says, for those who honor me. Now, it's interesting. I already shared with you about honor from the principle and the understanding of what we do to God, what we do with ourselves, what we do with each other. But, but honor in this passage means much something not just that, but it also means something deeper. When I was studying some more, I noticed that the original Hebrew word of honor here is kavod. And kavod uh, in English means glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so what we understand is, is that when we honor God, we're giving God glory. And when he, we give him glory, he graces us with his presence to accomplish things. That we could never do on our own. There are things that you will always toil for when you're in your own strength. But when you flow in the wisdom of God. When you flow in the ways of God. He will empower you to do things you could not do by yourself. So honor in this passage means glory. Another uh, definition for it means to make heaven. Uh, it means to make honorable. It means to cause to be honored. So God says to them, I want you to understand something. Those who honor me, I'm going to honor. So when you honor me, I'm going to put my weight on you. When you honor me, I'm going to esteem my worth on you. So when you walk in that room, you're not by yourself, but you're carrying my glory with you. I came this morning to preach to some glory carriers. Those who have a hunger and a desire after God that even exceeds my own personal ambitions and ego. That even exceeds what I'm personally looking for and looking to all. Notice as I close this message, verse 35 says, and I will raise up for myself a faithful priest. Why is he saying that? Because he's seeing all kinds of craziness happening around. But God gives them a promise. One word from God will settle all controversy in your life. You didn't hear what I said. Because if you heard what I said, you'd understand what just shifted in your life. One word from God will settle all controversy in your life. One word from God will bring co confusion and chaos to the side. One word from God. Sometimes when you come in this place, uh, you don't come not just because you're coming to assemble yourself, but you're coming because you need clarity. Am I talking to anybody here this morning? And God sent me to tell you uh, one word from God uh, will move you from chaos to clarity. One word from God uh, will move you from confusion uh, to understanding your assignment. Uh, all it takes is one word. Bible says, I will raise up. Somebody shout, I will. I will. He said, I will raise up. I have learned that in my life I can't depend on the people. Because people get flaky. <laughs> I've determined in my life that I can't always believe everybody. Oh, Bishop, I love you. I will be with you, though. I get nervous when I meet people like that. I'm going to walk with you the rest of us. Oh, don't, don't, don't make that promise. Just, just, just walk out and see what God does. Don't, make, don't, don't do that. Hallelujah. Don't, don't, don't overcommit none to the living. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, talk to me somebody. I, I, I've come to the realization that I, I, I've got to walk with him. Even when it appears as if I'm walking alone by myself. But notice what the Bible says. It says, I will. When I make a goal, I can break it. I'll get personal. I can say, I, I will lose 15 pounds in three days. And then that'll be the day that one of my friends, one of my neighbors around the corner will call me and say, hey, I got some pie. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I will lose five pounds in a week. And that's the day that everybody's 
offer me all kinds of food. Hello. So when I make a goal, I easily don't even have to try to find a way to break it. But what excites me this morning is that God says, I will. You didn't get what I just said. This wasn't Samuel saying, I will. This was God saying, I will. And you've got to come to the realization that even when things don't seem possible, one I will from God changes the equation. One I will from God can heal your body. One I will from God can take you from poverty and bring you to plenty. One I will from God can move you from where you are to where he's calling you. It only takes one I will. But hold on. Priest. Hear me carefully, church. How do we navigate a world that seems to be getting worse and worse? You don't have to watch the news to know that something bad is happening. How do we navigate a society in which public distrust continues to falter? How do we navigate a society in which we can't find help in the White House or even your house? How do we navigate a world in which so many who claim to know who God is and even speak and preach for his name can live what they say? Instead of getting depressed and blowing up online, we've got to remember what the word of God says. And God says, I will raise up a faithful There's a difference. Oh, go right. I feel this thing now. There's a difference between trying to be famous and being faithful. We live in a society that's obsessed with being famous, but they don't want to be faithful. Because when you're faithful, people ain't always going to like you. When you're faithful, they're not going to always understand. When you're faithful, they're going to say, why do you give? Why do you do? And nobody understands you. How do you come to work with a smile on your face, but tears in your heart? Because I'm holding on to God's I will. I came to tell them over this morning. Don't lose your I will. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I'm going after the glory. Whatever it takes, I will obey. Whatever it takes, I'm all in. I need some people to Somebody coming to a breeze. Somebody coming to a breeze. I'm over. 
I gotta know what I'm talking about. But you know what I'm talking about. My wife asked me the other day, a month ago when we got some news, how you feel about it? I said, I'm alright. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I said, how you feel about it? I said, I'm alright. I said, you're not scared? I said, I heard from God. One word from God. Settles all kinds of words. I don't need to go read the newspaper about the latest bad thing. I got good news. The gospel is called good news. We've been hearing a lot about fake news. But we need to go back to some good news. And the good news is I have a savior named Jesus who died for me and died up for me will heal me and will deliver me and will save me. That's enough for me. So what am I going to do? I will praise him. What did David say? I will bless the Lord. Half time. A little bit of the time. friends, thank you so much for watching our ministry today. I pray that the word has transformed and invigorated your spirit so that your life will never be the same. So like, share, subscribe today. We want to stay in touch with you as we give the word for the world. Text the word SHIFT, S-H-I-F-T, don't forget that F now, to 51400. And we will be able to stay connected with you every single day of the week. The presence of the Lord be with you. Expect greater. See you soon. Bye-bye.